In today's video tech tip, I wanted to run through some of the new features that SolidWorks has added to Composer in 2020. We've always been able to open up SolidWorks assemblies using SolidWorks Composer. However, this year they've actually added some additional options that make Composer even more powerful than ever. If we take a look at our SolidWorks import options here, we can see the option to import a SolidWorks bomb. This is a really good way to maintain consistency between your SOLIDWORKS build of materials and your Composer build of materials. That was actually added, I believe, a couple of years ago, if not uh, last year. Um, but the one that I really want to uh, kind of highlight in today's video is the ability to import SOLIDWORKS exploded views and saved views. So let's go ahead and see how that might work. We'll go ahead and open up this assembly, this flashlight assembly. And you'll see that SOLIDWORKS Composer is going to have to convert the SOLIDWORKS assembly into a Composer file. So we'll let that run for just a moment. Okay, so now we can see that our assembly has come into Composer. Um, and one of the things that you might be noticing here um, is that that bomb has actually appeared automatically within our first view here, this, this collapse view. Um, the other thing you'll notice is that these views were automatically populated. Typically, when we open up a Composer document, there are no starting views. There might just be a single default view here. Uh, but in this case, you can see that it has actually added all of these different views that correspond to different explode steps. So here we can see we have the initial collapsed view. And if we scroll down here, we can see that all of the explode steps have corresponding views. Finally, if we go way down to the bottom here, we can see that there is also a, um, an exploded view, uh, but that one has a different name to it. This is the lens. It's actually a named view. Um, so that's maybe a different position of this exploded view that has been automatically created. So if you're not familiar with that within SOLIDWORKS, you can create named views that have your own custom orientation. Uh, so that's a good way to bring those into Composer now, uh, in addition to the exploded views. So now that we have these exploded views here, uh, let's take a look at how we might go about creating a, an animation uh, showing these different explode steps. That's one of the nice things about SOLIDWORKS Composer. I feel that it's a little bit easier to work with animations in Composer than it is sometimes in SOLIDWORKS. Uh, so let's take a look at how that process might go. Uh, first thing I want to do here in our animation, we probably don't really need to show the build materials. Um, so we can switch to our exploded view one. And if we take a look at this, you can see that the bill of materials is also shown in this first explode step. One of the things that we can do here, if we don't really want to show uh, the bill of materials, uh, is maybe go back to our original collapse view uh, and we'll disable the bomb table. Um, once we do that, we can go ahead and redraw all the views. And you can see that that bomb table then is removed from all of those views. So now, now that we have nice clean views to work with here, let's take a look at how we might create an animation from these. We'll switch to animation mode just by clicking the little button up here in the upper left of the, uh, the interface. We'll go ahead and save our views, that's fine. Um, here you can see uh, that the bomb table is showing again, but we can just go ahead and turn that off. Um, so the way that this would typically work is you can actually just drag in your views to different spots on the timeline. So here at the zero second mark, I probably want to show this as collapsed. Maybe at the, uh, the two second mark or the, let's do one second increments. So maybe at the one second mark, I'd want to show uh, that, first, that first plug coming out there and then so on and so forth. We'll just kind of keep dragging these all throughout the, uh, the timeline here to these different time markers. So you can see whenever you do that, you also get uh, these little uh, notations up here at the top of the timeline showing you where you've added those. So that's a good way to kind of keep track of where you are as far as adding uh, these, different, these different explode views. Um, here you can see this one's a little bit out of order. Um, that's due to the way that this, uh, <laughs> this assembly was built. This actually came from uh, one of the lessons in our training class, our SOLIDWORKS Essentials class. Um, and there's a step in that, that lesson where we go through and sort of reorder explode views. Uh, so that's why you see step nine coming before, uh, before step five there. Um, but like I said, we'll just keep adding these throughout the timeline here. We can go ahead and scroll our timeline over if need be. Uh, let's see, we're on step eight. Go ahead and drag that in. And like I said, just kind of keep going about this. Um, you can see not only is it adding uh, positions for these components as we're adding these, 
um, but it's also updating the uh, the camera keys for these. Um, so that's really nice. That'll automatically adjust our camera view, um, so that we can so that we can easily show um, those different explode steps. Cool. Um, so there we go. We can see that we now have um, all those different explode views in here. Uh, we can add this last lens view if we wanted to. It's just sort of a different orientation here. Uh, and now if we roll back through the timeline and play this, we can see that now we're smoothly animating between all of those explode steps. And you saw just how easy that was to create here within Composer. Um, if we wanted to go back and maybe modify some of these, uh, what we might want to do is maybe start removing um, some camera keys. So for instance, here at this, uh, this point where we start exploding the, um, the, the, the bottom of this flashlight portion here, uh, what I might want to do is maybe take out some of these camera keys. Maybe I want it to kind of stay in one place um, as we're going through and animating that. So I can go back here, just grab those camera keys, maybe delete those. And what that does is it'll keep our camera in place. Um, it'll kind of smoothly move it to the next camera view. Um, but if I wanted to, um, I could go ahead and just add my own camera keys. So maybe I really just want to highlight this one portion of the, um, the base here. I can go ahead and insert my own camera key. And then again, just kind of keep doing that. Maybe at this point, I want to show just a different orientation of that base. Again, I could add a camera key right there and kind of so on and so forth. You'll see that this should then animate through those different camera keys until we get to the end here. So that's looking pretty good. Let's go ahead and play that back just once more just to see how, how it looks. And that's looking pretty decent. So that brings me to the next new feature of SolidWorks Composer 2020 that I was really, really happy about this year. In past years, it was sometimes a little bit difficult to get a good working video out of Composer, uh, but this year they've added the ability to save this to different formats. So we can take this video that we've just created, uh, we can go ahead and change the resolution of it if we wanted to. I'll go ahead and just leave this one alone for now, um, but we can go ahead and add things like anti-aliasing if we wanted to, uh, which should uh, kind of clean things up, make it look a little, little bit smoother. Um, we can also change things like our, um, our range of the video if we wanted to, if I didn't want to display the whole video here. Uh, but let's go ahead and save this. And you'll see here that now in our save as type options, I have the ability to save this out to not only AVI as we were able to in years past, but now I can also save it out to things like flash video, the MKV format, and MP4 format. Uh, if you've ever uploaded something to YouTube, you'll remember that MP4 format is the, the default format for YouTube. So that's a nice modern format that we can use, and that just gives us a much cleaner video. So we'll go ahead and save that out. And you'll see Composer is going to go through and grab every single frame of this animation in order to create that video. I'll append the finished video to the end of this tech tip so you can see what the final result actually looks like. But I also want to thank you for viewing today's tech tip. I hope this was helpful to you and keep coming back for more.